Hi, my name is Cassidy, and I figured I would show you how I made this little clock with a background gradient here. This is something that I kind of just made for fun. I, I saw a picture of a clock that I thought was cool, and someone asked if I could make a video, and here we are. So here is how I made this clock. Um, so first of all, there is this outer div that is called clock, and then there's the hands, and then there's the hour, minute, second hands on there. And that is all the HTML that we need for this whole thing. This being said, the reason why I have the hands in a separate div of the clock is for some styling reasons, and I will get into it. But overall, the, it is it is these divs. I tried to do it without this hands div, um, but once again, I'll explain why. Um, the HTML is probably the easiest thing. The next easiest thing is the JavaScript. The JavaScript was not too bad. It basically just got the the uh, divs, the hour, minute, second hands, and then set a rotation for the transform based on the degrees that it should be. So I make a date object, and then you get the hours, minutes, seconds of that date, and then uh, you set the interval uh, down here to call this function every second to change the hour, minute, second thing. I could probably make this smoother, but I don't care enough. You, you, you can do with it what you will. You could probably make this do it like every 200 milliseconds instead of every second. Um, and it, it would be fine. Um, it, it would just run kind of unnecessarily. Anyway, you can do that. So, so that's how that one worked. Okay, so first thing that I did with the CSS, this is the more complex part, made the background color white. I actually probably could spell out white instead, but it eh, doesn't matter. Anyway, made the background color white, reset the margins and padding to zero just because there's the browser defaults that are built into that, and then I added the width and the height 100 just to make it fill up the entire screen. The reason why I do that is to just kind of have a reset because a lot of times without that kind of reset, you get some weird styling positioning things happening and I was not in the mood to deal with that. So anyway, I tend to always put this kind of reset on the HTML in the body. Um, for the clock itself, what I did for positioning was I put it directly in the center. So when you do a position absolute, that means it is an absolute position on the page, um, meaning when it's absolute, it stays in that one position on the page. And if it were fixed, that means it would move or it would stay in that position as you scroll. And then if it were relative, it's relative to the original positioning. I'm not going to get as deep into that, but I kind of set it as absolute. Top left 50% puts the top left corner of this clock div um, right here. It, it puts that in the center and then you translate it by 50%, negative 50% there, so that it can be centered on the page. So that's what these lines do. Um, made it a black clock, made it a 250 pixel circle with these three lines. So that's all the clock is. If I wanted to make it blue, I can do that. And you, you, there it is, it is It is blue, not as cute that way. Um, you can see what it looks like too without the transform and that might help describe that a little bit better. It And then actually I'll move the border radius. So that way you can see that. When I do that, that means that the upper left corner here, that is in the center of the page. And so when I put the border radius on there, it makes it round. Again, the upper left corner is in the center of the page. And then when I move the transform, it takes half the size of the div and translates it in that direction, negative 50%. So that's how that positioning works. Okay, so with the hands, this is the part where it got a little bit annoying and there's a lot of resets happening in there. Uh, but basically I had to set the position to relative. So the, the that's kind of the default. I probably actually don't need this line at all, whatever. Um, and I made the div for hands be the entire size of the clock. And so if I did background and then let me just do yellow so you can see what that looks like. Um, it's just going to be this giant block right here. And notice how it's positioned. The reason why I did this, it was kind of a pain. I probably could have done this a little bit better, but it worked so I didn't question it, was the way the hour, minute, second hands were going to be positioned because it's rotating around a point. I wanted it to be rotating around a point that 
was positioned in a specific place centered on the circle. And so with this hands div, um, we could take out the background, with this hands div, by positioning it just in that upper corner, it can spin around that corner and not cause any problems. It was, it caused some problems. I, I kind of redid this part a few times. Like I could probably get rid of the width here, but then notice how they're still rotating in the correct way, but it changes the width of the actual clock itself, depending on the angle at which the second hand is. And it just, it, it was, this part was kind of a, a pain. And so by kind of setting an exact spot and an exact size for this hands div and then making the hands just the hour minute second divs live inside of there that made it so that it didn't move too much it's weird i know but what can you do okay so for the hour minute second hands what i did i positioned all of them in the exact same way where it was just on the page with no rotation i set their transform origin to the bottom center if I were to take out these lines over here in the JavaScript that stops them from rotating, this is their default position where they're just in this left, bottom, right, they're, they're in this absolute position. They're all this proper width, all this border radius. They're slightly round. You probably can't see that much. And their transform origin is the bottom center so that they can always tra uh, transform around that individual point and their rotation is zero degrees initially and then again in the javascript that's where the actual rotation happens so that the, this is just kind of setting the default and then once i get into the individual ones it's just positioning and so i made the hour hand white i made the minute hand white i could i could make this blue once again and you can see how it makes that hand blue that's all those lines do um for the heights You'll notice these kind of funky percentages, and that's because, so what I did was I, I took the height for each of those. Again, the, the height is 50 pixels, 90 pixels, 80 pixels for each of these hands. And then because I know the clock is this exact 250 pixels, what I did was I said, okay, 50 out of 250 is that percentage, and that's the this 20%, and so it's going to be top, negative 20%. Very similar with the height is 90 pixels, 90 out of 250 took that percentage, negative 36%, 280 divided by 250, negative 32%. So that's why the positions are like that. It's very exact and weird and not responsive and stuff, but I did not have the energy to, <laughs> to do anything more than that. I probably could have made this more relative sizes, but you know, there you go. Um, so anyway, that is how the hands are positioned and how they are rotated and voila. Um, and then there's the fun, pretty gradient thing that I added a little bit later. Um, this is where, once again, I kind of wish I could have done all of this in less divs, but what can you do? Uh, I made this uh, pseudo element here before. Um, so whenever you make a pseudo element, it's good to make the content equal to an empty string in general if it's going to not be with text or anything like that. It's not going to be a label or anything. And then this Z index negative one and positioning stuff, this is all because I want it to be beneath the clock. If I got rid of some of these things, it wouldn't be beneath the clock. Uh, if I got rid of that, got rid of that. Um, and then similar with the after, if I got rid of that. Uh, all of these are kind of doing the same thing in that, uh, oh gosh. Actually, oh, this is a whole positioning thing. I'm not going to just know that just know that it's for a reason. Uh, this this after right here, every single one of these things are truly just so that it can be below the clock. Like if I got rid of this background inherit, then it the gradient just wouldn't apply. Honestly, I just don't feel like explaining it. It was a kind of experimental. Gets, it gets the job done. Anyway, the background gradient is a linear gradient that it's, it's just from one to the other, uh, from this color, uh, this is there's the pink and the orange in here. We have it negative 45 degrees. I kind of just experimented with the gradient direction. 
you can do what you want. The transform and filter and opacity, all of this was truly me poking around until it looked decent. These numbers are made up and don't matter. They, I also kind of want to get rid of this zero pixel thing there, just zero. Anyway, so th these, these are just all made up numbers that worked and that's how I did it. With the animation though, I took that transform and the rotation and all of that and I just kind of made up more numbers and applied the animation. <laughs> Uh, this is where I'm probably not doing the best of this, uh, calling it a tutorial in any way, shape, or form. But this is this is what happened. I I truly just took this translate tr or this transform translate and scale line. I added that in there. I added some rotations so that way it could be like moving a little bit in between. Um, called the animation blobby. Put all of that in there and then made it an infinite animation that is five seconds long. I could make it go faster and you could see it just go. Ooh, look at all of this movement. It looks much more janky when you have it be that fast. But when you have it slow, then it's like, whoa, what is this gradient? It's so pulsy. It's so cool. Um, anyway, that is that is how all of that was built. This is not a very proper tutorial. I probably could have done a lot of this in a much smarter way. There's already comments saying how I could have built it better. But what can you do? This is how I made this clock with a background gradient. Enjoy.